This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In Apex 14, we created a master detail form where we were seeing persons data and the related employees data. But we saw persons records, records from the persons table, even if there was no associated employees record. What I want to do is talk about the SQL that underlies a master detail and talk more about when you're using two or more tables the types of joins that you can use. By default, you get an inner join. An inner join means you see related records from table A only if they do have a related record in table B. So it's only the records from each table that have a corresponding at least one record in the related table. But you can use a one-sided outer join left or right, and say, I want to see everything from table A, or in our case, persons, and then any related records from the employees table. There's also a thing called a full outer join. And a full outer join shows you all the records from table A and all the records from table B, but it will line up the related records from A if it has a corresponding record in B. So we're going to look at that, and whenever you're working with more than one table in a query, you're likely to see the ambiguous error, column ambiguously defined, that triggers what you need to do to pinpoint your errors in the SQL code. So I'm over in Apex, and I'm going to open up the development application and run it. And if I go into People and go to the Master Detail, I was in here earlier, so I already have a filter on Sanchez. So I'm seeing that I have two persons with the last name Sanchez. But if I'm looking at Yolanda, there's no corresponding data down here under employee. If I uncheck that and check Teresa, we do see a corresponding employee record. So we're seeing all persons and then if that person is an employee, we see the related data. So Apex is basically using a one-sided outer join to show the data from these two tables. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to click on the Application Builder tab. I'm going to go to SQL Workshop and SQL Commands. I'm going to type in some code. I'll pause the video while I do that. So I'm going to look at purse underscore ID, first name, last name, status, role, and then I need a comma here and begin date. These first three will be coming from persons. However, I could get purse underscore ID, which is a foreign key in employees table. I could show it from there too. I just will need to specify. I'm not doing that right now with a fully qualified column name. I don't have the table name in front because I want to see the error. Status role and begin date come from the employees table. So all these columns will be coming from these two tables, persons, join, employees. I can put join or I can put enter join. If I don't put the word enter, I'm still by default getting an enter join. So then I have to say, how do these two tables connect? What's the common column? So it's on and I'll say persons, purse ID is equal to employees, purse ID. And I'll run that, but I'm going to get an error. I will get column ambiguously defined. Just start looking through your code and find out which column you need to specify a table name for. Just like I did in the on clause, persons dot persons underscore ID. So one of the tables, pick one. It doesn't really matter. I'll get the same data because of the common data in that column in both tables. So now when I run this, I'm seeing all people, if I scroll down, notice I changed the rows to 200 up here, okay? 
so that I could see all the records. And when I scroll down, I'm seeing 26 rows. So that means right now there are 26 rows and the limit here is coming from employees. I have 26 employee records and I see the corresponding person's data. If I switch this to a left join, this is simply which table you want to see all the data from. If it's the one listed first, it'll be to the left. If it's the one you listed second, it'll be to the right. So left or right just depends on the order in which you listed the tables. So now when I do persons left join employees and run that and scroll down, I'm getting 121 rows because I see many rows that have no data coming from the employees table. But as I scroll up, I eventually see that these are persons with related employee data. So I could do a right join here, but the fact is I will never have an employee record without an associated person's record. I can have a person who's not an employee, but I'll never have an employee who's not also a person. So what I'm going to do is actually flip these table names around and I'll put employees first just to show you that I could do a right join, but then I would list the order of the table names differently. So I'm going to come down here and make that persons. And then I run it. The output will be the same. Same columns to show. And the fact that I have persons on the right means I would use a right join. I'm going to make a couple of changes so I can illustrate the full outer join. I'm going to click here and go over to Object Browser, leaving the SQL commands tab open, I'm going to go to persons. Now I have a requirement here on zip that it must have data, but I'm going to remove that. So if I go to constraints right now for the persons table, I have a check constraint not null, and I have that for purse ID, which is the primary key, you can never undo that, first name, last name, and zip. I am going to drop the requirement that we put in a zip code. I want to be able to have some people in the persons table without related zip code data because I simply want to illustrate the left, right, and full outer joins. I feel like I should warn you that when we make this change, it applies to both applications, the development application and the production or working application because we are doing this at the database level. So don't do this without thinking carefully if you're going to make changes such as removing a constraint. So I'm going to do drop and I want to drop, oh I need to find out which one that is because I let the database number it and it's the 11857. So now I'll pick it 11857 and next and I will drop that constraint. That will allow me to come in here to the data and take this first record, Kane, Mary Lou Kane, and I'm going to edit that and I'm going to come down here and remove her zip code and then save that so that I now have one person with no zip code. So when I come back to my SQL, so now when I come back here, I can add some different code. I'll pause the video while I do that. So I'm going to look at purse underscore ID. I don't need a table name in front of it. It's not wrong to put it there, but I don't need to specify because zip doesn't have this column name. I'm going to look at F name, L name, first name, last name. Now for zip, I need to specify one of the tables. It doesn't matter which one but I do need to specify because zip is a column in both tables. So I'm going to do persons, then city, and then state name. This is from the persons table. Enter join, I could drop off the enter and I would get the same thing. Enter join zips on persons dot zip equal zips dot zip. Order by last name, first name. I have commented out, but will later bring in where uh, not first name, but last name equals Kane. So right now with the two dashes, that, that line in the SQL code does not execute. So now let me run this. Here I'm seeing 
only persons that have zip codes and only zip codes that have a related person. So if you notice, I'm getting 121. What's happened? Kane's not in there because Kane doesn't have a zip code. In the previous query, our maximum row return was 121. Now when I switch to left join, I will see all persons and any related zip. I will run that and then I will scroll down until I find Kane. Here's Kane with no related zip data. If I do a right join, then I'm going to see all zip codes and any related person. So I run that and here I have a city and state for a zip code that has no related person. If I came up here, this is the one place where this would make a difference and I change that to zips and run that again and scroll down, we can see that this is the zip code that hasn't been associated with any person's records. So right now I'm getting 121. I'm getting 121 because I have one zip code that doesn't have a related person. If I scroll up here, you'll see looking in the last names, I have no cane. If I come back up here and I do full outer join and run that. As I scroll down, I'll look, I see Kane, I keep scrolling, and I see my zip code without a related person. And I see a total of 122 rows. If I, just very quickly, if I take that comment off and run this, actually that's got to, the where clause has to come up before, I should have put that before the order by and I see Mary Lou Kane. Again, if I do a left outer join, then I'm on, I will see Kane, even though she doesn't have a zip. I'll run that, and I still see her. However, if I do a right join, I don't see her because she doesn't have a zip. So I'm seeing all zips if the last name in any related person's records has the last name Kane, but she doesn't have a zip code. Now, where this would more likely come into effect here is if we want to see which zip code doesn't have a person. So we could say where zips.zip .zip is null and run that. Wait, that's not right. I you got to pick where you think it will be null, and it's not going to be null in zips. It'll be null in persons, and I can run that. So now I'm seeing, okay, here's the zip code without a person. If I switch that to a left join, and I'm thinking that the related zips dot zip would be null, a person without a zip, then I see my Mary Lou Kane. So oftentimes you want to check for only the records where the data is null, so you can see the records with no corresponding data in the other table. I'm going to switch over to the document camera real quick, repeating what I've shown here, but doing it with a diagram. So we're looking at joins. And if we're looking at an inner join, we have table A, and we'll say that this is persons. And then we have table B, which is the employee. And what we get when we do an inner join is we get the data where there's something in purse and there's also something in employee. If I do a left join because I'm listing person first here and I add my employee table, then what I'm going to see is this, but also this. I'm going to see all persons records and then any corresponding employee data with those person records. If I do a right join, then what I'm going to see is all the employee data with its associated person's data. Now, I'm showing this in an abstract way. The reality in our database is you'll never have a record over here without a corresponding person's record. But in general, with a right join, you're going to see everything from the right table and it's associated data from the left table.
if I do the full outer join, then what are we seeing? We're seeing everything. We're seeing this, we're seeing this, and we're seeing this. Hopefully that helps.